Hey, what's up, Investor Channel? I'm going to talk to you how to read a balance sheet. Let's get into it. So let's start with Apple Computer, one of the world's uh, richest companies and probably most widely held stocks uh, in the in the world, probably. So we'll start with their balance sheet just really quickly. If you kind of want to know how to get there, I typically find it by searching the company name and then IR, which stands for Investor Relations. And you could come through here on on their website, or you can simply click on SCC Filings which uh, Security and Exchange Commission, I think, is what it stands for. Now, typically what I'd like to do is if they have this on the website, drill down to the quarterly findings, and you'll find the most recent one. And Apple's case was filed uh, back in July. And, uh, you know, you can open it in whatever form you want, and here it spits it out for you. But what I like is usually the financial documents are right at the top. Typically, I would say most companies lead with kind of a balance sheet. Apple actually leads with a statement of operations, which gives you uh, sales and, and cost of sales, kind of a margin and, uh, you know, kind of an operating look at the business, which is something we'll definitely go over um, more in depth on the channel in the future. But we're, today we're going to focus on the balance sheet. First thing I want to look at is what is... What are these val? Because they abbreviate these numbers, okay, for simplicity and things like that, um, and also to save space on these things. These figures are in millions, so that means you need to add six zeros behind these numbers to to figure out. So this is not fifty thousand. This is not fifty million. This is fifty ba 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 billion with a B. And so it's that. Should as we go through that, just keep in mind how impressive this balance sheet is when you consider this is not a country that collects tax or extorts people however you want to look at it this is a company that has 50 billion dollars in cash and we'll actually show you here in a minute it's actually a lot more than this um so here, the other thing i like to look at is what are the terms we're looking at you know what is the time frame it's probably a better way to put it so this is from september to june which is kind of an odd uh, spread of time. Um, but hey, that's what we're working with it. We're looking from September 2018 to Ju June 2019. So this is what these numbers, the time frame, it spans over. Cash and cash equivalents this is exactly what it sounds like. This is straight cash, homie. They had 25 billion back in September 18. Now they have 50 billion. Marketable securities is kind of like cash, okay? This is some kind of maybe treas U.S. Treasury or maybe, um, you know, they have um, securities in other countries where they get a bunch of money. Um, again, you could probably drill down to this um, maybe in some other financial reports, but not really. They're just telling you this is marketable securities, $44 billion, $40 billion, as long as the entire world's economy – doesn't collapse and if it does who cares about a apple's balance sheet at that point but if as long as that doesn't collapse and there's confidence in uh you know currencies around the world they have 44 billion dollars in marketable securities okay so you can add that number essentially to this 50 so there's close to 100 billion dollars in cash right there right on the top of the balance sheet i can't name another company that has 94 billion dollars in cash right off the top that is like that's like a flex guys like if apple wanted to flex they should just tweet this or put this on their instagram page because uh that is about as impressive as it gets right there accounts receivable this is probably um you know money that's coming to them but it hasn't been paid yet so what what you can do is discount this a little bit now i wouldn't just discount it maybe discount it a little bit with apple it wouldn't really matter even if you discounted this by 10 percent or whatever it doesn't make a difference when you're talking about these kind of numbers but a smaller company one example i could think of is like a clothing company and then all of a sudden like a retailer goes out of business so it happened a few years ago sports authority went bankrupt here in the united states and so nike and um under armor and some of these these big companies clothing companies actually had a lot of exposure to that so this accounts receivable didn't get paid because one of their largest customers uh wasn't was bankrupt basically now with apple not it's not a huge number so i wouldn't really worry about it but i just kind of wanted to give you you know a reason why you might discount this okay not not something that's super common but something that does come up enough inventory this is honestly this is super impressive 
Okay, Apple has it's really steady with their inventory. They have about three to four billion dollars worth of inventory at a single period of time. For a company that that generates as much revenue as this company does, and this is not a, like a just. I mean, I know they're a big software company, but they they derive most of their revenue from like selling phones and pieces of plastic and glass. It's not like Google that makes a little bit of money selling, uh, you know plastic and glass, but then also sells a, a crap ton of ads. So you'd expect them to have low inventory. Apple has really tight inventory controls. This is like a number where if everybody stopped buying the iPhone, you know, the, the newest iPhone, or there was a problem with it, it got recalled or whatever, look how little money it is. I mean, $3 billion is not little, but when you have $94 billion in cash, uh, yeah, $3 billion would be like dropping a quarter on the ground when you had $100 in your pocket. So uh, really impressive, extraordinarily impressive, uh, and maybe more impressive than the $94 billion in cash, honestly. Vendor non-trade receivables. I would say this is probably similar to accounts receivable, but for whatever reason, they have to classify it a little bit differently. Maybe it's not like a regular incurring thing. As I've seen, it, go, it went from 25 down to 12. So it might be one of those things that's winding down or kind of fluctuates a little bit. But, you know, almost as good as cash as long as the company or the people that owe them the money will end up paying. Other current, this is what I love about Apple, other current assets, ten, and this is, oh, you know, just $10 billion. Wouldn't you like to look at your bank account and in, in uh, some of the other assets that you own, there's $10.5 billion there. Well, that's Apple. And uh, so that brings uh, current assets. Again, current assets are things that Apple can access very quickly or that in the case of accounts receivable that are due within one year time or, or around there. And they have about $135 billion worth of current assets, and you know, compared to 131. So very stable, very stable business, um, which, you know, might not be that great for the stock. You know, you, you kind of want these numbers to grow a little bit faster. Let's look at non-current assets for Apple. Now, these are assets that are, are more prolonged, you know, further down the road. Not straight up cash money in your bank account, but this might be a bonus to give you an idea. Maybe you got a new job and you, you're going to get a bonus after your second year or your third year. That would be like a non-current asset. You probably would be counting that money and anticipating that money, but it's not something that's hit your bank account yet. That's kind of like Apple. Now, a little bit different, these marketable securities, I'm sure they probably have these tied up in things that they they without maybe a huge penalty or maybe they can't at all sell these or, or, or they're, you know, these are locked up a little bit more than say these marketable securities. But look at this number. So again, when you say, oh, you, know, you want to estimate how much cash is on the balance sheet. Well, here's 50. And if you just stop there, you'd only be getting a part of the story. They have these marketable securities that are worth about 45 million. And they have these that are worth a hundred and call it 16 B -b 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 billion dollars okay so ch that's incredible guys 50 plus 40 plus 115 just do the math this is in billions of dollars it's just incredible how much money this company has i mean there's countries n numerous countries in the world including the united states that doesn't have a balance sheet that looks like this uh, good Lord, let alone publicly traded companies that you can buy a share of their profits by buying shares of the company. Absolutely incredible. Now, what you'll see here is notice how this went from 25 to 50. Okay. Where, where did it come from? Okay. Since the total assets really didn't change where, you know, where did this growth come from? Well, it could have, you know, Maybe accounts receivable gets dumped into cash. This number went from 170 to 115. So maybe some of these became current or they dumped into cash. And so you can kind of do the, you know, reverse engineering where some of the, how this money flows on here. Property, plant, and equipment. Again, this is stuff that is not like cash money, but 
you know, if Apple went bankrupt or had to liquidate or whatever, they, you know, they, they might, I mean, I'm not saying they will have to do it anytime soon, but you can apply this to other companies that you're looking at. Well, this is worth something. Properties worth something, uh, you know, equipment and stuff like that is worth something. They don't have a lot, you know, 37 billion. They just built a beautiful new campus uh, about an hour away from me. Uh, yeah, it's not a huge number when you factor in all this other stuff. Uh, other non-current assets. Again, wouldn't you love to look at your balance sheet and have other assets here, other assets here, and that's $43, 44000000000 billion in other assets. They don't even, you know, they don't even break it out because, you know, what happens is they can, it says consolidated here. As I go through some other companies, some of this might be goodwill or an intangible asset or something like that. Um, but they lump it together inside Apple because it, it's kind of immaterial. You know, it's hard to say $33 billion is immaterial, but when you have, uh, what, $200 billion in cash? Well, kind of is immaterial. So here's total assets, $322 billion. Okay, and look how much is in almost straight cash, homie. 50 plus 40 plus 115. I mean, that is... I mean, it's not tied up in inventory. It's not tied up into property or some intangible assets or goodwill or some stuff that you can't even really, it's, it's not even something you can sell. It's un, incredible, just incredible. Now, notice it has gone down. Okay, so that is something to keep in mind. And if this number keeps going down by 40 every, uh, what is this? This is like, I don't know, eight months, six months. I don't know what that is. Um, might not be a great thing. So that's something to keep an eye on. So it's not all like sun signs and roses, but guys, this is just absolutely incredible. And there's a reason why I did Apple is because this is this is to give you an idea of like when you're looking at some other company that you want to invest in and then you look at this and it's like, well, you know, I can see why a lot of people have their money tied up in the stock. Second, now a balance sheet is exactly what, you know, there's assets on one side, which are quote unquote good. And then there's liabilities on the other side, which are not, I wouldn't say bad, but they counteract an asset, you know? So for every dollar in cash you have, you might owe the bank a dollar. And so it balances out. So accounts payable, this is money Apple owes likely to suppliers, maybe even like uh, they do a lot of advertising on TV and social media. So they probably build up uh, account balances on those kind of things and then pay them, you know, like we pay our bills. We pay our bills once a month. Apple might be able to negotiate terms where they don't have to pay their bills as much or as frequently. Maybe they're on 90 day terms or maybe even, uh, you know, yearly terms or something like that to either cost save or. Or since Apple has so much cash, they're able to keep that cash and either earn interest on it or deploy it into the company. And so accounts payable is money that they owe. And notice it's gone down. So, um, you know, you, I don't know, maybe advertising cycle, like I said, maybe product design cycle. Um, maybe the phones aren't selling as well. Uh, that could be another thing. So they go from 55 to 29. They owe less people money. Other current liabilities, then the Apple kind of, that's why I'm going to go through some smaller companies uh, because they kind of lump everything together here. They don't give you a lot of visibility in it, but it stayed pretty steady, $33 billion. So I, I don't know what that is. Might be rent and things like that. Uh, I'm not sure. Deferred revenue is, you know, this is why I kind of put liabilities in, uh, you know, I don't want to say it's like negative because some of this stuff like revenue is good. And this is just deferred. This is probably money that, you know, so there's weird accounting rules and things like that. And depending on like timing of payments and things like that, again, it's $5 billion, a lot of money, but in terms of Apple, it's not a lot of money. So it's not really super material, but, um, deferred revenue. It's something that if you see on a liability side, it's, it's not, it's not that bad, honestly. It will get balanced out. So when this deferred revenue comes current, Apple gets the check. It'll simply go from here up to here. Um, commercial paper, a form of debt um, or something like that. But it's not super high in terms of Apple's total uh, you know, assets. So it's not something that I would be uh, super concerned about. Now, term debt. This is, uh, again, this is a current liability. So this is debt that's due within the next probably 12 months or so. It's gone from $8 billion to $13.5 billion. Again, that's a lot of money. And that would be very alarming, except for the fact 
Uh, again, look how much cash they have. They owe somebody $13 billion. This is why when you do screening for company or if you have this like hard rule in your head, I'm going to invest in companies with low debt or no debt. I'm going to only uh, screen for companies with no debt. It's it, that's not that's that's not uh, real investing. OK, understand that debt is even look how much money Apple has. Why are they borrowing money? Uh, probably because banks are willing to lend that to them for extremely low rates, um, like incredibly low rates, like lower than like a mortgage. So why not uh, if you can do it? So $13.5 billion, again, when you have this much in cash, not a big deal. You will see in other companies, if this was $130 billion, now let's do that. If this was $130 billion, th then, I mean, Apple stock would be, you know, probably cut in half at least because that's a lot of money come current okay that means this this and this and this is pretty much all gone okay but it's 13 billion so not a big deal now non-current liabilities this is debt take a look at this okay so again you, you're trying to dig in how much debt does apple have and maybe a website or google could spit that out but maybe they can't if you came here and said oh yeah term debt 13.5 billion that's only a little bit of the story okay non-current liabilities this is debt that's not, it's kind of like your mortgage. You know, you get a 30 year mortgage. I mean, you can pay it off whenever you want, but um, you're not thinking about year 30 uh, when you just started making payments. So it's kind of where Apple is with some of their debt. Look at this. Now things start getting interesting. Look at this 85 b -b 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 billion dollars in term debt. So add that to this, and that's uh, what, $90 billion or so, almost $100 billion. So now, now take a look, 50 plus 40 plus 113, but minus 13 minus 85 billion. So now, now, okay, okay, there's a reason why there are people that short Apple stock. There is a reason why that not every, this stock isn't worth five quadrillion dollars. It's because, okay, this company has leveraged their balance sheet, balance sheet a little bit here, okay? Now you go look at the interest rate, what they borrowed this at, combine that with an, uh, you know, kind of a, a standard inflation rate of 2% and you will find that they borrowed this $85 billion, uh, you know, X out inflation and it's a uh, very, very, very low interest rate. Other current liabilities, again, I'm not trying to make excuses for Apple. I should probably lead to, I am a shareholder of Apple, but I don't care if you short the stock or you buy, go it long or you don't touch it. Uh, I'm here just to educate you and to, to use it as an example. Other non-current liabilities, 50 billion. So, you know, other liabilities, this is probably like uh, leases on buildings and maybe employee stuff and, and, you know, but that's a lot, okay? Okay, so we got 90 billion, okay, okay current liabilities right here. This is due kind of within the, the next year. This is like your cell phone bill, your car bill, your insurance, you know, stuff that you got to pay every month. That's basically what this stuff is. 90 billion. Now this stuff is like your mortgage or your fourth year of your lease or, you know, um, you know, your college tuition that might be spread out over, uh, you know, you got, you know, your whole life to kind of pay it back. Hopefully, <laughs> um, this is, you know, that's what this is. So they have 225, and this is, excuse me, this is what this is. So we have 136 plus the 90, and that gets us to 225 billion in liabilities. Again, compare that with $322 billion in assets combined with that, and we kind of get down to a number of total shareholder equity here, okay? So not bad. Not bad to be in the positive because what we'll do is we'll move on to our next company here. This is Uber. So they actually just went public. And that's what's interesting about Uber is notice that they just went public. So they give you a very kind of short window into their financials. I'm sure you could dig back into their other ones. They were like quasi public before they actually went public on the public markets. But here we go. They start their quarterly report back in 2018 and this goes to june so what's that a six month view now the other thing i want to always do is check these figures are in millions so again we're adding six zeros here so in the case of uber back in december 
This might have been even before they went public, actually. Um, and I don't know that for a fact, but I'm pretty sure. So I, I think they've only been public for a couple months now. So this was before they were even a public company. So that's something you want to keep in mind with Uber. And then I'm going to talk about this canopy growth, which is like a marijuana stock in a minute. These are fairly new companies. And so they're raising money through IPOs. They're raising money through um, issuing stocks. So that's when this number goes up, that's kind of interesting. Okay. So they went from $6.4 billion. This is again, cash and cash equivalents. This is as Randy Moss would say, straight cash on me right here. And they've gone into June. Uh, so six months later, they have you know about $5 billion more. And so that's really good. We know, uh, and we don't all know this, but Uber is not profitable. So they're getting this money through fundraising. Um, again, I know that off the top of my head because Uber is Uber like covered. Like they're, I mean, you watch CNBC or read the Wall Street Journal or anything enough and they're talking about Uber. Um, but this was a lesser known company. It's something you'd want to dig into. 6.4 billion, turned it into 11 billion. We know that's not from operations um, or not all from operations. And that's over six months. Restricted cash. So this is cash, but it's kind of restricted. Not a lot. So not a big deal. Accounts receivable. Again, this is just like Apple. This is like somebody owing you money and they pay you every month or they pay you, uh, you know, once every six months or something like that. In Uber's case, it might be, I'm trying to think what it would be with with Uber. Um, may, maybe they get payments from uh, advertisers. I don't know. Um, but nine, maybe they don't bill certain customers uh, uh, all at once or, or they kind of put them on terms. I don't really know, but it's not a huge, huge, huge number. But in terms of what Uber does, it's actually a a decent number. Prepaid expenses. So this is like prepaying your phone bill or or something like that. Again, so it's recognized as an asset here, even though it's an expense. Okay, because once it gets expensed, it kind of um, goes on to the kind of the liability side as an expense. So. You know, it's not a huge number here. I can't think of anything off the top of my head where if a company like this really accelerated or something, it would be this huge negative, but uh, it is what it is. Assets held for sale. So I think it's probably related to some operations that they had to sell. And you notice it was on the balance sheet here and now it's it's off. They, they've obviously sold it. And it's gone to, you know, this part either turned it looked like might have turned into cash right there um it might have turned into cash or stock in another company or something like that uh restricted cash and uh, again this is total so we got our current assets up here they don't label it quite as well as apple does but these are our current assets right here this is why it's kind of important to kind of go through the fundamentals because some companies like apple kind of really clearly labels it Whereas Uber starts with assets and then they kind of show you here's, you know, the current current assets here. And it's gone from $8.7 billion to about $14 billion. Now, um, so this is what I would refer to as kind of longer, maybe longer term assets. And this is the point I wanted to kind of bring to you here is notice how they break out goodwill and intangible assets and uh, things like that. Apple probably has this stuff too, but since it's such a small number in comparison to the other ones, they likely just group it up into this like other category. Um, and you might find a balance sheet or if you, you could email Apple, I'm sure they break it out for you if they don't already in some other um, documents. But um, so we have, um, you know, like goodwill and intangible assets. These are things that, uh, you know, if you see a company, this would be a red flag to me. It's not the in the case of Uber, these numbers aren't you know super significant when you when you take into account these other ones. But if you added a zero here, or especially two zeros and a couple zeros here, then it's like, wow, this company is pumping up their asset line based on goodwill and intangible assets. Um, and it's something you see from time to time, especially with companies that are trading you know under a dollar or around a dollar a share, maybe even a couple dollars a share. Something you want to keep in mind. Um, so they also have property and equipment. They have these kind of equity method investments with their accounting as an asset as well. 
and it gets us to this total asset line of about 24 billion and they've gone to about 31 billion over the course of again about six months now on to the liability side this is i'm not i think you guys got a clear idea so i'm not necessarily going to go down each of these individually let's jump to this total current liability so again this is uber's kind of bills that they owe like almost right away within the next 12 months and it's gone from 4.2 to 5 5 that's not a big deal this company does have some debt here and things like that and they kind of count these as longer term uh, liabilities and that gets us to a total of 17 billion it's actually gone down a little bit so they've used maybe a little cash or you know use some money from operations to kind of pay these things down and so they're down to $15 billion. Again, compare that to 30, and it's not uh, not too bad. But as we notice, look where their ex stock equity was um, just a few years, uh, just you know, back in December. So we had negative, 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 negative stockholder equity, and it's gone positive, uh, likely because of some IPO funds and some funding that came in. But if you see negative shareholder equity, something that, I wouldn't say that's a red flag, but uh, it kinda is. Uh, you know, you kinda, you, then, okay, if you see negative shareholder equity is, I mean, how many sophisticated investors held Uber stock? I mean, it was private. You know, a lot of sophisticated investors held their stock at this time. That meant that they really believed in the long-term vision of the company. If Uber was like a 25-year-old company and they had negative shareholder equity, bankruptcy is like around the corner, okay? So, uh, you know, because it really just means the asset lines is, you know, is, is, isn't as big as it needs to be. So, that's Uber. Last company. Thanks for hanging with us here. Canopy Growth. Now, this is like a Canadian company, so these are a little bit different. This is in Canadian dollars, and I think, I guess this is thousands. Companies in the United States always put it this way, and uh, in Canadian, I guess they do it like this. But this is Canadian dollars, so that's something you do want to, if you're an American investor, something, or any investor around the world, you want to realize, you know, what the Canadian dollar is, is you know, versus maybe a currency you're more familiar with. Um, so again, we've got current assets here. I kind of like how they break this down. This again, we ch we check our term. This is going from June to March. This is more of a typical. The reason why I had this is this is like more typical of of you know how we go. We went from March to June. Okay, so it's you know March, April, May, June. So a nice three month kind of view into the company and that's kind of what these you know for whatever reason uber you know uber just went public and for whatever reason apple did this weird you know june to september thing maybe it's a release cycle thing or they just lump everything all together that's possible as well so here's cash and cash equivalents notice that canopy has gone from 2.5 down to 1.8 uh-oh but again we learn that, hey, that's just cash and cash equivalent. Maybe they have more of it in this marketable securities, or maybe some of it moved to a non-current asset or something like that. So when you see this number decline, it doesn't mean that all the cash depleted. It doesn't mean cash went down at all. It just means that the cash and cash equivalents, kind of straight cash homie in your pocket, went down. We see the marketable securities also down. This is a company that's spending some money. Accounts receivable, almost identical biological assets <laughs> i don't know what that is that's gone up a little bit it could be like maybe fertilizer for the marijuana or something like that that's maybe what i'm thinking there inventory Ooh, they got a lot of weed on hand over here they're gonna do a lot of smoking over at canopy growth headquarters because boy they have a lot of inventory uh that's gone up and so that's something you want to keep keep you know keep an eye on if, if the company is starting to stack inventory remember we saw that apple it was incredible. Like, what did Apple, like, look at their cash compared to inventory. Look at Canopy Growth. Like, their cash is still, I mean, it's not something I'm, like, super alarmed with, but it's not quite on the, the you know, it's not quite on the, the stage that Apple is. And Apple sells way more stuff. I mean, I'm sure they're selling a lot of pot, 
But I, I guarantee you there's a lot of iPhones being sold uh, out there around the world. And so for them to keep this tight of inventory is absolutely stunning. Um, so canopy growth, got a lot of weed, but uh, hopefully they're able to sell. It is a pair, I believe marijuana is perishable. So that's another thing with canopy growth and, and kind of this inventory line. Is this perishable? Like think about a fashion company too. Like, you know, your your inventory becomes perishable. It goes out of style or say you have a bunch of winter coats and they don't sell. Well, they're not going to sell. Maybe they sell next winter. But or maybe we go through like a dry spell or whatever. You know what I mean? Like inventory can be perishable. Exact same thing with Apple. This is probably why they keep a tight lid on it, because, you know, once the iPhone 11 comes out, you know, how how great is it to have iPhone 8s and iPhone 7s sitting around? So it's not good. So that's why Apple keeps a tight lid on with in terms of can we did again. Another thing to, to keep in mind, look at Uber. Did they have inventory? No, because they they just it's like an app. So always key, you know, that's the key to being a great investor. That's why I picked like three different companies, like a shining star that sells like a commodity, like an iPhone's almost like a commodity. Now everybody has one or, you know, kind of a version of it. Uber is like just an app, like it's a service. It's incredible. Um, and so they don't have inventory. They don't buy and sell anything. And Canopy has inventory and it's like, it, it like can go bad or it can like, I'm pretty sure like weed doesn't last forever. So, uh, yeah. So this is something you want to keep in mind. P prepaid expenses. Again, this is bills they've paid in advance, either to save money or for terms or whatever. Now we move down into non-current. Again, they have like goodwill here and intangible assets. I don't know. I, I always discount this. I don't care what the company is. I discount this. Um, by how much? I don't know. But, uh, you know, I'll take it away from this number. So here's their total assets down here. I'm going to take some of this off. I'm going to take at least a billion off. Okay? I don't give a damn about goodwill. I don't give a damn about intangible assets that you can't touch, you can't sell, you can't do anything with. Okay? And, and you know, when you sell this company, investors aren't going to give you a multiple on this. You know what I mean? They're not going to be like, oh, you have so much goodwill and intangible assets. I'm going to pay you a multiple on this. No, they're going to pay you a multiple on probably not your inventory, but, you know, really your sales and your growth. OK, so I, I tend to discount this a little bit. They've got property plan and equipment and it's, pro you know, I'm sure it's like lights and things like that to grow the weed or equipment and stuff. Other financial assets. They got a lot of stuff going on here. But, that, you know, look at this. It stayed pretty steady, actually. And that might, you know, for some companies, might be a good thing. For some companies, might not be a bad, might be a bad thing. Come down to the liability side, and they have accounts payable. Ooh, they owe people a little bit of money here. And um, this is the current portion of long-term debt. So they have long-term debt here. This is something that is due in the future. And then here, current portion, this is like due, not necessarily today, but within the next 12 months. So it's like, it's almost like your mortgage, what you're going to pay on your mortgage this year. And this is like what you're going to pay on your mortgage for the rest of your life. Uh, that kind of thing. Or like, here's your student loan debt that you owe in the next 12 months. Here's the student loan debt that you owe forever. <laughs> Hopefully you're not in that boat. Um, notice how this has come down a lot. So, wow, they either refinanced it or they paid a lot of it off. So that's, you know, that's something probably worth a little bit of investigating there. Other current liabilities, um, they kind of lump it all together. I'm sure this is like um, probably operational related, I would guess. Um, so there you go. And then now we got our long term stuff. So we've got our long term debt. We've got deferred tax liability. So this is taxes that they are deferring, but will probably pay later unless they uh go to the canadian government and uh you know lobby the right guys i don't know if that's how it works there or not it works that way in the united states uh, share repurchases okay not bad probably not a bad thing if they're re if you're a shareholder and they're repurchasing they've got 1.2 billion dollars to repurchase share. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure if that's what this is but if that's what this is, this is not a terrible liability, okay? Not, neither is long-term debt or anything like this. But some of these might be more positive than others. That's something, that's the takeaway I want you to take away from this is 
don't just look at liability as a terrible thing. It, it might not be that bad. You know, some of this stuff might actually be positive for you as a shareholder. And they've got other long-term liabilities, which has ticked up a little bit. So we've got um, total liabilities here of $2 billion, uh, 2.7, 2.8 billion. Um, again, counter, you know, counterbalanced with 8.6 billion. Again, looks pretty healthy, but look, we got 1.9 billion in goodwill, and we have, you know, another half million on, um, on uh, what is this intangible assets? I, I wouldn't even look at this. I would just, if I could get highlight this and just delete it, I would, because uh, I don't even look at that. So let's see with a company like this, like growing weed is like. You know, I live in California, okay? So there, there's like two homies down the street growing weed. And nobody cares about canopy. But anyways, <laughs> uh, and then we get down to total equity here. You know, after you kind of minus out some of this stuff, stockholder equity, accumulated deficit and things like that over the life of the company, we get down to that. And folks, hopefully that gave you an idea on how to read a con condensed consolidated statement and in the united states it's condensed consolidated balance sheet and it should give you an idea again when you think balance sheet when you see balance sheet on a test you see balance sheet uh, anywhere in some kind of financial document just know it's assets balanced off by liabilities so there's assets on one side almost always listed first and then liabilities on the bottom side. And then if you have a negative balance between the two, that is not necessarily a, a terrible, terrible thing, but should raise some extraordinarily red flags. You should want to do extensive, extensive research into a company if they have negative, essentially negative equity in the company. And in terms of Apple and bigger, larger kind of mega cap companies, um, you know, it's not a number that I'm going to pay attention too much. I'm going to pay attention to how they're managing these finances, how they're leveraging them. You know, again, this is a company with huge amounts of money, huge amounts of cash, do not necessarily need to be taking out debt. But Apple has actually borrowed this money very cheaply. And guess what they've done with it? They've bought back the stock. And they've paid investor dividends. And so as a shareholder, it's not a bad thing. Now, if they took all this money out and paid Tim Cook and, uh, you know, for Johnny Ive and four or five other executives all this money, it would be a very bad thing. But and maybe, you know, you know, technically it goes to them as well through through the stock price appreciating. But um, that's kind of what Apple's done with the, this engineering. So we're kind of dipping off into some stuff that we don't need to. But that was Apple, Uber. And canopy growth balance sheet. Hope you enjoyed. Leave me a comment below. Hit subscribe, guys. I'm a small channel here. I got two kids. I don't get advertisements. I do this for free, uh, at least for now. Google's not running any ads on the on the videos, so I'm doing it for free. Doing it for you guys, and I do it because the comments you guys leave me have been uh, extraordinary. So I want to thank you, and uh, hopefully I'll be back soon with another video. Thanks again.